So today we focus on the development of the palate. I'm Dr. Gaurav. The cleft lip and cleft palate are the most common congenital anomalies of head and neck, having an incidence of 1 per 750 live births. In cleft lip, as I mentioned in my previous class, the baby is likely to experience feeding difficulties and may have missing teeth. In cleft palate, in addition to these, speech problems may also be there due to abnormality in development of the palate. So first of all, it's very important to understand the normal development of the palate. The palate is formed by the union of three components. The frontonasal process, which forms the premaxilla, it unites with the right and left palatal processes. And when the three components, the right and left palatal processes and the frontonasal process, they unite, it leads to formation of the palate. The frontonasal process, it forms the primitive palate or premaxilla and it bears the incisor teeth. The right and left palatal processes, they are plate-like shelves arising from each maxillary process. The fusion begins anteriorly and it extends posteriorly, it proceeds backwards. Later, the mesoderm of the palate undergoes intramembranous ossification to form the hard palate. So the hard component of the palate that is formed due to the intramembranous ossification, the most posterior part where the intramembranous ossification has not extended remains soft and we refer to it as the soft palate. Now what is cleft palate by definition? Well, in simple terms, defective fusion of components uniting to form the palate leads to a cleft palate. So in the figure, we can appreciate the cleft in the palate. The three components which were supposed to unite have not united in a proper manner and that leads to formation of the cleft in the palate. In the figure, we see a cleft palate with unilateral cleft lip. So the cleft in the palate is there with a unilateral cleft lip. The clefts of uh, palate result in abnormal communication between the mouth and nose. This may be unilateral or bilateral. So in this particular figure, we must appreciate that there is a Y-shaped cleft in palate with bilateral cleft lip. The clefts of palate that extend to its anterior end are associated with cleft lip. So when the clefts are in the anterior portion of the palate, they are associated often with the cleft lip. So cleft palate is associated with cleft lip. And the reason for this is that the development of both the anterior part of the palate as well as the lip is the same by fusion of frontonasal process with the maxillary process. So the clefts of palate that extend to its anterior end are associated with cleft lip as both upper lip and palate are formed by fusion of the maxillary process with the frontonasal process. So in this figure, we appreciate a Y-shaped cleft in the palate with a bilateral cleft lip. So cleft lip is associated with cleft palate here and the defect in the anterior portion of the palate is associated with a defect in the neighboring upper lip. The cleft may be limited to the soft palate as shown in this figure. So one must appreciate the different types of cleft possible in case of a cleft palate. And with this, I end my class on this topic. I thank you for your time.